In this last lecture on polymers, I want to give a really broad overview of uh, synthesis and processing techniques that are that are used for polymers. So let's begin with uh, synth synthesis. And there's basically two forms of synth synthesis that I want you to be aware of. Uh, the first is addition polymerization. And we've talked a little bit about this before, um, but all it is is the process of adding monomers one at a time to form some linear chain. And it consists of three phases. The first phase is the initiation phase. And what you see is there's our monomer, um, and it's going to join up with some reactive group. It's going to break the double bond and then form to the chain and leave a reactive uh, carbon uh, region at the end. So, so now this can go bond with another monomer. So that's the initiation phase. The propagation phase is where what's formed in the initiation phase actually goes out and does bond with more monomers. So it forms this chain. And so it's important to remember that addition polymerization is going to typically form uh, linear chains. It's not what's going to be used for uh, network polymers or heavily cross-linked polymers like we talked before. So we end up with this chain formation, and you can imagine this goes on for many, many chains. That process is relatively rapid, so it might take a hundredth or a thousandth of a second to form, let's say, a 1,000 units uh, during this phase. And then finally, we have to terminate this process. So there's a termination phase. Uh, and, and all that's happening here, there's one of the uh, one of the uh, chains that have formed in the propagation phase. There's another. And there's basically two options. They could form, uh, they, they could bond here and form this uh, terminated combination here. Or they could do what's called uh, disproportionation. And in this case, one of the hydrogens is going to bond in this this region, and then a double bond is going to form with this carbon, and that's what you see here. So those are your two options uh, to terminate the addition polymerization or the chain reaction polymerization reaction. So that's one type of polymerization. A second, uh, well, let me back up. The the relative rates of initiation, propagation, and termination, that's how we can control the molecular weights of the polymer that we're going to produce. Okay. Second type of uh, uh, polymerization is the is called a condensation polymerization reaction or a step reaction, and this is the formation of polymers by stepwise intermolecular chemical reactions. That sounds confusing, so it's easiest to talk about a example. So here's an example of the formation of nylon 6,6. So we have the monomers here. The first one is a hexamethyldiamine, and the second is a dipic acid. And what you see is those react to form nylon 6,6 plus water. So a couple features are important in this uh, type of reaction. The first is that unlike in the addition polymerization reaction, the reactants, uh, that is the, the participating uh, components, do not have the same formula as the repeat unit. So right, hexamethyldiamine and adipic acid, are neither one of those are nylon 6,6. Okay. The other thing, and the reason that we call it a condensation reaction, is that it typically condenses out a byproduct, in this case, water. So we form the reaction between the hydrogen and the hydroxyl, and we create water uh, because of the reaction. So there's our uh, a condensate. The feature to be, uh, 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 I guess, aware of in this type of reaction is that it's going to be typically uh, a slower uh, reaction than the addition polymerization, so it takes a longer time. Um, this is the kind of reaction that we would expect to see uh, when, we're when we're forming um, epoxies and other sort of networked polymers. Okay, that's all I want to say about polymer synthesis. Now let's move on and talk about the processing of polymers. And I'm, I'm not going to cover every possible processing type, just the, the kind of the major ones. So the first I want to, that I want to talk about is compression molding. And this type of uh, uh, processing technique can be used for both thermoplastics and thermosets. Uh, and I'm showing you the process here, but I'll just give it to you in words. First, you're going to place the polymer in some mold cavity. And so that there's, there, there's your uh, this sort of pink polymer in the mold cavity. Then you're going to heat the mold and apply pressure. That's going to uh, basically liquefy uh, the, the polymer and allow it to form uh, in, the, in the same shape as the mold. And then uh, when, you're all, oops, when you're all done, you're going to have the, the cooling of the polymer part, and then you have your molded piece. It's, it's fairly simple. 
Okay, now let's talk about injection molding. Uh, in this case, uh, there's plastic pellets that are put into a hopper. So here's your hopper with the plastic pellets. Then there's a ram, a hydraulic ram, that forces the pellets into a heating chamber. And uh, so it's now putting the, the, this heated, uh, these heated pellets, which uh, actually become a liquid, under pressure. And then this molten plastic is going to be forced under pressure, in, so it's injected, into the mold cavity and forms the part. So here's a little animation kind of showing that uh, uh, process. Uh, you can see that the ram uh, creates the pressure, squeezes the polymer into the mold, then the, the mold um, cools, the polymer cools, becomes a solid part, and, and there you have it. Um, the final uh, conventional form of uh, polymer processing I want you to be aware of is extrusion. And this is typically only used for thermoplastics. And uh, it begins in the, a similar way to the to injection molding. We put plastic pellets in a hopper, and then they're dropped onto what's called a turning screw. And as the screw turns, it moves uh, the, the polymer forward. And there's a, the, there is a, a heating elements along the way, so the plastic pellets are melting as the screw pushes them along. And then finally it gets, through, uh, gets to the end, and it's forced through a die under the pressure of whatever the screw is driving. And it creates this extrudate uh, that comes out of the, the die. So another a little animation to, to highlight that, you can see the green polymer being squished through a die and forming the extrudate. And I'll show you that one more time. Uh, the screw turns, uh, forces the polymer through a die. The die then uh, is, is creating the shape of the polymer as it comes out. So that's the extrusion process. The final process I want to talk about is 3D printing. Um, it's probably a little bit more um, uh, modern than the other processes. Uh, there are a variety of ways to 3D print. I'm going to basically break them into two different types. And I, I guess I, in my mind, all the other types are some form of subcategory or combination of these types. So the first is fused deposition modeling or FDM. And in, in this case, uh, what happens is that you have some polymer filament. Here's your polymer filament. It's fed into a nozzle. The nozzle is heated. Um, to the uh, somewhere above the glass transition temperature, and the the uh, so the filament is then extruded and it lays down uh, a, a bead, so to speak, of polymer, and it can do whatever shape the the uh, it wants depending on how the extruder and the build platform move. Typically, this is only done with thermoplastics. Okay, another technique is what's called stereolithography, and I'm grouping it with digital light processing, DLP, because they work under the same principle. So uh, in this case, we load a polymer resin. So unlike in this case where we have a, a solid uh, polymer filament, here we pour a liquid resin into a bath, uh, and we pass UV light through the bottom of the tank, the build platform comes into the tank and the polymer is cured on the build platform. And then as it moves up, we continue to cure successive layers onto that part. Typically, this is going to be uh, 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 the resin that's used is going to be a thermoset. It's not going to be a thermoplastic because it's not going to be heat driven. It's going to be uh, a reaction cure that's initiated with, with UV. So let me give you just uh, some some animations of what these look like. So this is a Prusa 3D printer uh, showing you the FDM approach, uh, printing some some form of a creature here. Uh, and you can see that the build plate moves and the ex and the extruder moves above it. And that's how you can get the the full XYZ motion of the uh, of the filament. OK, I also want to show you uh, uh, the SLA printing. Uh, in this case, this is a Formlabs printer, and this light you can see is actually the laser, the UV laser, curing every layer, and this is obviously time-lapse, so we're drawing the part out of the resin bath. Um, we have a, a whole suite of these in, in uh, actually we have a suite of these as well, in our uh, makerspace in the engineering building. Uh, and the only difference between this SLA uh, process and the DLP process is that SLA is using a UV laser, and DLP is going to use basically a UV screen, uh, that, that like a TV projection screen underneath to generate the, the UV um, 
the the regions where you want the uv to cure so those are those are sort of the two i would say primary methods for 3d printing uh, polymers and and kind of the the highlights of each so Hopefully you found that interesting. Again, I know it's just very cursory. We're not going to go into great detail in each one of those, but I want you to be aware, at least as engineers, um, how, how we uh, handle and uh, process polymers.